Hey everyone, it's Anthony Allen Ramos. All right, Out Pop star Jordy is back with a brand new album. It's called Boy. It's coming April 21st. We've already gotten to hear some of it. We've heard story of a boy. Love you, let you go. Also good, but now we're gonna get the full album. And guess what? He's going on tour. Lots to talk about. And of course, nominated for a Glad Media Award for Outstanding Breakthrough Music Artist. And guess what? I'm with Jordy right now. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so happy to be here. Just always happy to be talking to Glad and, you know, being involved. And as we were saying earlier, being at the Glad Awards was just such an incredible experience. So I'm just so excited to chat. Yeah, and I love that you got to go to the Glad Media Awards in LA. And guess what, everyone? That is now available to watch on Hulu. So if you missed it, you can check out all of the highlights. Um, but let's talk about this new album that's coming. I'm so excited. I think, you know, thinking back to January when Story of a Boy came out, and I think everyone just really got so excited. Obviously, the TikTok response and beyond has been so good. And obviously, to have the blessing from the original group to kind of sample, you know, what what they did in the 2000s. I mean, how are you feeling? I know you are, when I think of someone that's out and proud, like I think of you because you are all of those things. Oh my gosh. Well, I appreciate that so much. I am very excited for the album. It's been in the works for probably the last year and a half since I put out my first record. Um, and honestly, you know, what I love about my project is I'm writing songs in real time. I like to release them in real time. Like this has been my life for the past year and a half. And these songs are really special to me. And, you know, when you say out and proud, you know, it makes me so happy. I, I came out when I was 15 years old. So I've been out for a very long time. And I, you know, was very fortunate and lucky enough to, you know, come from a really supportive community and family. And so, I don't know, I feel like I've been comfortable with that part of myself for a long time. And so for me as an artist, it's like, like this is my responsibility is to be out and proud and to write music from an honest perspective that's authentic to my experiences as a gay man. And, you know, the album is, you know, just that. It's just my my real life, honest experiences. So I'm just excited for the album to come out, for people to hear these unreleased songs that I'm so excited about. Um, and yeah, no, just really, really excited. I want to say some of these songs, the uh, the track list is out now. So, you know, obviously we have Boy, which makes sense. We have Love You and Let You Go, um, I, I, Dry Spell. I want to talk about that. We have something called I Get High, Becky's Brother. That one sounds very interesting to me. And then we mm -hmm. have Love You Bye, which also, I mean, that's just a highlight. You have 12 tracks on this. Um you know, like how personal, I mean, I know it's it's probably cathartic and helpful for you to, you know, to put this music out, but, you know, to, but it's one thing to to write it and then, but that now to have the world be able to hear it and know all of your, the stuff that you've gone through, you know, how are you feeling about all that? I mean, it's a crazy experience. You hold on to these songs for such a long period of time and, you know, they're like sacred to me and, you know, they're only mine. And yeah, it reaches a point where you put it out in the world and it becomes everybody else's. But, you know, yeah, I mean, the, the track list, I'm I'm so excited for people to listen in order. You know, that was very intentional. Um, and I mean, we can hop into those song titles if you want to know more about it. I mean, I Dry do. Spell was the very first, Dry Spell was the first single we put out on the project. And you know, just from the title alone, I, I, I wasn't hiding a thing. I was going through a dry spell and I needed to write about it. I needed to express that frustration. And of course, what better way to do it than through a, a bop, right? What's the first line of that song? I think it, it, it kind of sets it up pretty well. Uh, kind of sucks to be the guy who likes to fuck but loves to cry. Yes, you know? that's it. That's it. See, we got that one. Um, Let's jump to Becky's brother because I instantly, I'm thinking of who I know you know, Fletcher. I'm like, Becky's so hot. Now I'm like, we have Becky's brother. Yeah, so it might catch you by surprise. This is not about a friend of mine named Becky and her hot brother, which okay. may, be, may be the assumption based on the name of the track. Um, it's actually a song for my little sister. Um, my little sister, her name is Becky. And, oh. you know, I've been performing my entire life. I've been you know, involved in music and entertaining my entire life. And so, you know, I was a senior in high school when she came in as a freshman and immediately she was met with, oh my God, you're Jordy's sister, you're Jordy's sister. And then I get older and, you know, I'm pursuing this, you know, career as an artist. And it's really easy for people to kind of, you know, just be like, oh, you're Jordy's sister. They see her at my shows. You're Jordy's sister. Oh my God. And we had a really vulnerable conversation where she was like, I love being Jordy's sister and I'm your biggest fan. And she is my biggest fan, but it hits a point where it's like, 
you know, she loses sight of her own identity. And so after that conversation, you know, I was so happy she could be vulnerable with me about it. But I was kind of like, you know, it might be hard for you to be known as Jordy's sister all the time. I want the world to know that I'm proud to be Becky's brother. So that's kind of where the song that's- originated. So it's more of it's more of a wholesome family sibling anthem rather than, you know, a friend Becky and, and her hot brother. But maybe, you know, maybe I'll write about that too in the future. Who that's knows? where I my head went. Sorry. But I love that we get a little sentimental with that. That's so good. Um, you of know, course. With, with story of a boy, you know, thinking back, I, I think, you know, you obviously you had said like when you heard that song back, I mean, what, in 2000s, early 2000s, like there wasn't representation for us when it came to those types of songs. And so then for you to get to kind of, redo this but also you know like in a kind of a tribute way and sample it in your own new way but then also to have nine days the original band you know their blessing how what was that like for you honestly it was it was a very healing experience you know as a young closeted like more flamboyant theater kid I I didn't really feel like I related to like the rock community I've been a pop boy like ever since I was little so I was I was dancing to Spice Girls. I was dancing to NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. And like, that's who I was listening to. And obviously I heard Story of a Girl all over the radio when I was a kid. And I mean, so many people just hear the first couple seconds and they're like, I know exactly what song this is. Yeah, It's so familiar. It's so iconic. And, um, you know, the idea was kind of brought to me. My manager, who's also queer, he reached out to me last year and he was like, wouldn't it be cool if we kind of, you know, put your own spin on this? And I was like, that would be dope. So I got into the studio and you know, we made this version that I fell in love with. I just, I loved the song. And so, you know, we got the information uh, about John Hampson, his team. We reached out. We were like, what are your thoughts on this? You know, people have tried to sample this song over the years and it just hasn't been the right fit. But I was expressing to them, like, you know, this is important to me. This is a song and a perspective that, like, I needed as a queer kid. I needed to hear Mm -hmm. a boy singing about a boy. And what better way to do it than bring this familiar melody back? And, uh, you know, John Hampson, he listened to the song. He listened to my first album, Mind Games. And when we caught up for the first time, he was just so supportive. And he wanted to push a queer voice. And for me, that little Jordy is, like, it's he's so healed because John, this rock star from this era... And, you know, the singer behind this iconic song, he, you know, is being such an ally. He's like, I want to push this perspective. I love where you're coming from. And it's it's obviously so important to you. So let's do it. And uh, we also got him to like be in the music video. It's just mm-hmm. been like such a fun experience. And at this point, I'm very lucky to call him a friend and a mentor. And hopefully, pretty sure he's going to be able to get on stage with me at my New York show on yeah. Friday to sing the song with me. So we'll see. And we'll talk about the tour in a second, but what is it like for you now to be a queer artist and for you to now be, you know, putting music out like this and then seeing people on TikTok and all of your queer fans and also straight fans. But I mean, I think specifically for, it's gotta be so amazing for you to see the impact that you're having as a queer artist for the queer kids out there and queer people that are listening to you now. I mean, look, like I, from the very beginning of my career, I was like, I'm going into this, like not hiding a thing. Like I, my, my favorite kind of music is honest, authentic music. So from the get go, I was like, I'm going to be me and I am a gay man and I'm going to write about my experiences being a gay man. And, you know, I want to create music that's for everyone and pop music. Cause at the end of the day, you know, I, I just want to make music for the whole entire world. And, you know, that's so special and important to me. But I also know that it's really important for our community to hear themselves in mainstream pop. Everybody deserves to hear themselves in music, whether you are gay, bi, trans, whatever. You deserve to hear yourself in music. And so for me, it's it's I it's such a privilege. I'm so honored to be able to do what I do and, you know, meeting queer fans at all of the shows and being able to connect and share our stories. It's it's really the most beautiful thing and it makes me feel less alone and it makes me feel loved. And I can only hope that the music does the same for them. So it's what it's all about. And I love that so much. And, you know, you mentioned being, um, you know, like, as you said, flamboyant in high school, young and in theater, what what advice do you have for kids out there that might be having a hard time that are, and plus you're a master at social media and that can be a blessing and, and a curse. It can be tough to get lost in it. Um, you know, what advice do you have for kids out there that might be, you know, struggling with who they are, maybe having a hard time in school? Um, you know, what would you want to say to them? You know, 
when I was coming out, the It Gets Better project was like in full force. And that was really special to me. I actually had It Gets Better tattooed on me because, you know, it's it's an important phrase to me. And look, I'm very privileged to come from the community that I come from. Like I was met with love when I came out and I know that that is not the norm and that that is not um, what is common amongst most queer youth in this country. So all I have to say is that there are people out there, even if it doesn't feel like it right now, there's people like me and so many people out here who love you, who hear you, who see you, who, you know, will remind you at any time you need that you are worthy and valid of love. And, you know, I think, you know, you said social media can be a blessing and a curse. I think for those in communities that feel really restricting and, you know, communities where queer people don't feel safe being themselves, I think that's where social media can be a really beautiful thing. There are people who I've met through my music online, on Instagram, on TikTok, you know, from all over the world who, you know, come together and create these online communities. And so my, you know, what I would have to say is like, if you're in a place where you don't feel safe being yourself, there are people out there who will show you that love that you need. And um, it really, it, it gets better and just keep being you and don't sell yourself for anything that you're not. Um, and, you know, I'm here for you and I love you. And it's uh, it's a scary world we're living in right now. There's a lot of awful legislation happening and it's, it's, uh, it's pretty upsetting waking up to new news every single morning um you know just an, another law that's being passed and all i have to say is like i'm not stopping like we're going to keep fighting this fight and we will rise together and you know i uh i'm sending all of you listening to this just a big big hug and uh you know we're going to get through this together we're going to fight you're on tour now um you've been to chicago you're heading you know all over we've got dates in new york uh, yes. Georgia, Colorado, but you know, you mentioned the legislation, Tennessee is one of the trickiest spots right now. Glad is doing so much work to make sure, um, that we are doing all that we can to support the community that's in Tennessee and beyond, you know, performing in Nashville. I mean, how, you know, it's, it's tricky. You know, I just saw like Orville Peck was heading into Tennessee, but it's like, I think it's so important that we have our queer artists that are saying, you know what, we are going to show up. We are not afraid of this and we're going to, you know, be ourselves. And I think like, if I were a queer person in Tennessee, how exciting it would be to have someone like you come through my state. Oh my God. I mean, well, yeah, first of all, as you can tell, I'm on tour based off of this interesting background, but we are, we are working with it, baby. We are doing it. Um, you know, shows in these states in and of itself, it's an act of protest, right? Like, I am I am not afraid. I will be going to Nashville on April 20th and I'm going to be putting on a show and I am going to speak about the things that need to be spoken about, you know? Like I perform Story of a Boy every night and I talk about the 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 trend that is happening on TikTok with these beautiful trans creators um because it's so important to raise awareness and lift these voices and um you know, it, it it's a different energy doing shows in these states than doing a show in New York, doing a show in LA. And I love it all. But I think at the end of the day, like we do this, you know, we make music and we do these shows exactly for this reason. That is to bring our community together and to, you know, create those safe spaces that these people need in these states where they don't feel safe all the time. And I would only hope that, you know, my concerts are a place where people can escape um, whatever communities they they feel othered in and they get to come and celebrate themselves and feel loved and feel happy and warm and euphoric. And yes, I will see Nashville on April 20th. And uh, despite all of the awful things that are going on, we're going to put on a great show and we're all going to be able to celebrate together. So I love that. Um, before I let you go, please just tell me what it was like to perform for Kelly Clarkson. I mean, I know... You were going crazy. I saw it social. <laughs> I mean, speaking of like boy and like healing the inner child, like everything having to do with the album, like I watched Kelly win American Idol with my family when I was young. And, you know, for her to be like holding my record and like seeing that, I, it's it's surreal. I mean, she's one of the, the greatest artists of our time, one of the best vocalists of our generation. And I have always been a huge Kelly stan. And so, you know, to, to be able to, you know, perform on that show, let alone a unapologetically queer song being performed on her massive platform that is the Kelly Clarkson show. I mean, it, it was incredible. And, you know, 
thank you to Kelly for allowing me to do that and for pushing it. And, you know, yeah, it's an experience I'll never forget. Kelly's the best. I'm so happy for you. Jordy, it's so good to catch up. Just a reminder, everyone, Boy is out April 21st. And don't forget, you can catch him on tour. Tickets are selling fast. So if you are interested, make sure to get them quickly. And um, and good luck, Glad Media Awards, May 13th in New York City. Outstanding breakthrough music artist. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for the rest of the album to come out. And I will see you soon, my friend. See you so soon. Thank you so much. And always so much love. Out on Hollywood, didn't go like you thought it would, and I watch him on the internet trying to be happy.